This country enjoys some of the most varied and the most breathtaking scenery in the world. From highlands to lowlands, from borderlands to lakelands. I'm determined to explore them all. But there's more than that. My mission, if I choose to accept it, is to take on the challenge left for me by an unseen hand. To catch a dragon. Easy. Each of those challenges will force me to get under the skin of wherever I am. Right. <laughs> However demanding they are. Whoa. Uh... This time, I'm in the Scottish Highlands. There are many Highland regions around the world, but none compares to the grandeur of Scotland's. I'm beginning my journey on the remote eastern shores of Loch Lomond. This is Bothy. They were originally built to house farm workers in remote places, and now they're used by walkers as a place to find shelter in the wilderness. A wilderness like this, the far shores of Loch Lomond. And this is the area I intend to explore when I get my task. Griff, find a golden eagle. Well, that sounds exciting. Though I have no idea how easy that'll be. There are nearly 12,000 square miles of highlands, but there are just 400 pairs of golden eagles living amongst them. Searching for one of the largest birds of prey in the country will take me into the remote and deserted parts of this region. Outside the tourist areas, the Scottish Highlands are one of the last truly wild landscapes in Britain. Historically, they've been a place to retreat, to hide, to go to ground. But this same forbidding landscape has been reimagined as the romantic world of Scotch whisky and tartan shortbread. Ferries are a way of life here. To hail this one, you raise the orange boy and wait for the ferryman on the other side of the loch to spot the signal. Loch Lomond is the largest inland stretch of water in the British Isles and one of any number of physical challenges facing the traveller to the highlands. It's never really been very easy getting around this world because the lochs and the mountains get in the way. And the roads that we use today, they, they were built to carry troops to suppress the rebellious Highlanders. In contrast to where I've come from, the west side of Loch Lomond is very much on the tourist trail. How much do I owe you? Four pounds, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I'll tell you what I'm looking for in this area. Is a golden eagle, have you ever seen them here? Eh, uh, not, uh, I've not seen many eagles here. Where would I have to go if I wanted to find golden eagles? Well, I would think it would probably best be going to the hotel. The hotel? Is it likely I'll find a golden eagle here? But inside are the usual Highland trophies. And here we go, the monarch of the saloon bar. This is the golden eagle of our Louis Hotel. Massive bird. They have a wingspan of seven feet. This one, of course, isn't going anywhere in a hurry, but then it's been here for longer than anyone can remember. It was probably shot at a time when eagles were more common. Eagles are widely considered still in the world as a sort of aerial vermin. And their biggest enemy is humankind. The golden eagle is carnivorous. It eats other animals, including sheep and deer. And as a result, it was almost hunted to extinction by gamekeepers in the 19th century. 
Even though their numbers are rising, the illegal culling of eagles is still a real threat. I've been advised to go south. I wonder if that's my lift. I need help to get me into the wilderness, and this is an eagle of sorts. At least, it's the name of the company that restores E-type jags. Hello. Oh, hello. I saw you coming better than that. I heard you coming. And I'm going to get the wheel. Obviously, I'd like to be able to give you a top gear commentary on what it feels like, the short throw of the gear lever, the wonderful power beneath my right foot, but quite honestly, I'm concentrating too hard. I might feel like a million dollars, but that's mainly because that's how much one of these chariots actually costs. Driving it along, I feel like a waiter crossing a crowded hotel lobby carrying a huge silver tray loaded with crystal. Built in 1962, this E-Type has been entirely restored and brought up to date under its very long bonnet. It's a very beautiful machine, but it is a silver eagle, not a golden one. And so, with a deep sense of loss, I must be on my way. Well, it's a good job you can't get a signal here because I was just about to phone my wife and tell her to, to sell the house. Right. This may look like a set from a science fiction film, but it's actually the new viewing platform at Inverouglas. Its only purpose is to showcase one of the most scenic outlooks in the Highlands. And this is it. Loch Lomond from the very best location. It's a view worth taking in, but I'm not here just for the scenery. I'm just looking above the bends to see if I can spot anything, but no, no birds at all. Absolutely naked. What I need is eagle supervision, because an eagle's got much stronger vision than the human. It's HD compared to our cathode ray tube. If we've got 200,000 pixels per square millimetre, it's got a million. If we see three colours, it sees five. That enables it to spot a rabbit from two miles away. But I can't spot it. Whilst I've been trying, though, I've gained some company. The viewing platform attracts every passing tourist coach. This is where it all began, the romance of the Highlands, because 300 years ago, this was the wild badlands, the haunt of Rob Roy McGregor. And then that was made into a romantic story, and ever since then, people have been flocking here to have a look at it. from all over the world. More than 15 million visited Scotland last year, but you can guarantee that none of them went to where I'm going next. Real wilderness is difficult and time-consuming to penetrate, but this is where eagles choose to live, and I'm going there. David Anderson is a conservation officer with the Forestry Commission. For speed, we're using an Argo Cat, a kind of amphibious super tractor. You're familiar with 4x4s? This is an 8x8. That's a great machine. Sometimes you wonder, is it really going to go down there? And down it goes. After several miles, we reach a crag that even the Argo cat can't negotiate. David is leading me to inspect an eagle's nest. It's in a secret location, 
high up on the side of a granite cliff. I'm in search of Britain's largest raptor, but I can come here because they aren't in residence, though I'm told I'll find evidence that they recently have been. And I do. This is carnage. A carpet of rotting carcasses. Just before I came up here, David said, oh, pick up the old skull and hold it up and I'll tell you what it is. But quite honestly, I don't feel in the mood to, uh, to touch any of this. So, David, you've been up here. Yeah. So tell me, what am I looking at? We're basically looking at a whole range of species that live in the uplands here. A number of uh, young fox cubs. There's also some uh, red grouse carcasses in, in here as well. Dave, what's the biggest prey they'll take then? The biggest prey arms I've seen them take are animals as big as a roe deer. And what we think they do, they, they catch and kill them by piercing the skull, and then they section them. They're almost tearing them. They're, they're like a little butcher, and they bring, the, bring parts of the carcasses back into the nest. I can pick this up and show this, because this is a... A sort of deer's foot there, complete. And then we've got skulls over here, which could be badgers, and there's a backbone. The entire rib cage of what I think is a fox over there, well, judging from the fur, still attached to it. This is the amount of uh, uh, animals that it takes to get a, a young eagle under the wing. How many chicks do they have at one time? On a really good year, they'll rear a chick. On an exceptional year, they'll rear two chicks but mostly they actually uh, don't rear anything. So just a thought here, David, I'm, I'm pretty close to this nest. Is it, is it likely that a, a, an eagle's gonna swoop in and, and add me to this bed of, a bed of <laughs> rotting carcasses? Once the eagles have actually fledged from the nest and these birds have been away now since July, there's no chance of that happening. I don't think, by the sound of it, that by even by staying here, I'm gonna get up close and personal. Eagles control areas of anything up to 80 square miles. In order to understand the hunting ground that goes with that eagle's nest, I've arranged some aerial transport. Having been trudging around on the mountain, I've now got a hankering to have a look at it from the eagle's point of view. Captain David West is taking me up to see what we can see. When we fly like an eagle at last, and you get some idea, looking down here, of the territory, of course, that an eagle surveys as it flies around. But you also get some idea of how the habitat has changed so completely. These forests are everywhere in the highlands. They're man-made conifer plantations. Because they're so densely planted, they can't support the wildlife the eagle preys on to survive. And so we've actually created an upland landscape which doesn't favor eagles. number of islands down at this end of the loch. Absolutely, uh, Griff, and these four islands sit right on top of the Highland Boundary fault line that runs through Scotland. And on one side, you're in the Highlands, and we've just passed into the Highlands now, and we're leaving behind the Lowlands. Golden Eagle sightings are by no means unknown in the skies above Loch Lomond, and so the islands, which number almost 50, could be well placed to provide a perfect viewing opportunity. But more than that, they seem a symbol of Scottish independent spirit. So I'm exchanging one form of Highland transport for another, the Island Ferry. Dougald Scott actually owns one of the islands. Yeah, yeah, I was born here, so I've always, not always lived here, I've walked away for a while, but most of my life I've been here. And your family have owned the family of the island for how long? since 1930. At that time, there's only uh, five houses on it, and 
and there wasn't a restaurant or anything in Gravar. At just under half a square mile, Inchmurren is the largest of Loch Lomond's islands. We're just 20 miles from Glasgow, yet you'd be hard pushed to find a more remote place to live. You have a shop as well? No, we don't have a shop. No, we have to bring everything in. So everybody is responsible for their own supplies? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Dougald takes me to the highest viewpoint on his kingdom. Spectacular. How dramatically wonderful. But no eagle in sight today. To distract me from apex predators for a moment, Dougal takes me to see a new holiday home he's building. The official population of Inchmurren is just eight people. But they're always looking for new recruits. And visitors to the island, are they, are they brought into the... Oh, yeah, if they can help, yeah. Can you leave? Bricks, blocks, any good at that? Yeah. Well, I, I could certainly, yeah. I suppose I could have a go. Any good with a hammer, maybe? Yeah. Oh, with a hammer, I can do a hammer. Um, as well as a holiday resort, Inchmurren is also a farm. Oh, there are jobs to do here, too. We'll need to take them in and warm them. Right. And uh, there's one needs uh, dehorned, so yeah. yeah. You want to do that, try and say that? Dehorning? Yeah. I've never dehorned uh, a cow before, but, you know, hey. You'd learn something every day. Am I being right. recruited? I'm here for a moment and lay it down. Highland Games are one of the oldest and most important events in the area. Dougald's family have been frequent competitors over the years, and now Dougald suggests that I have a go at some caber tossing. What do you have to do? Well, you have to stand up on its end, first of all. All right. The objective is to toss the caber so it turns end over end. Not easy when it weighs 175 pounds and measures 19 and a half feet long. Underneath it. Yeah. And lift up to here. Yeah. Then run with it and throw it. All right. That is a feasible thing. <laughs> <laughs> but but clearly you have to go. <laughs> Yeah, I have to go, and then I go down like that. But if you seriously think I'm going to try even to begin to lift this thing, when I can't lift it even with Dougal's help, I just say, oh, oh, whoops, oh, no, oh, dear, oh, gracious me. The cable's fallen over, and I, it's hardly worth picking it up again, but <laughs> thank you very much. i am say to you, you know... Dougald seems to have a lot of other activities on the island he'd like to show me, but I've taken the opportunity to slip away for just a moment. I've only been on the island a little bit, but already I'm getting a little bit stir-crazy. I begin to think, this loch, it's a great drawbridge, but it's also a boundary. Exactly. I want to fly away. I want to get on. I want to travel. And I still need to find an eagle. But there is a way I can do that. I think I've learned that it's not really possible for a human being to get close to a golden eagle in the wild, unless it means it harm. And I don't. But there is another way. And this is it. Orla is one of only two golden eagles in captivity in the country. Trainer and minder Stuart Robertson has kindly brought her here to meet me. Tell me about Orla. Orla's 12 years old, female golden eagle. Uh, just now she's just down at flying weight, nine and a half pounds. She is used as a hunting bird. Um, and in the UK, they're used for hunting hares, deer, uh, mountain hares, and occasionally fox. How good are they as hunting birds? Are they as tame as a falcon? Is it easy to get them to be your companion? They can, they can be a good companion, and then you go hunting. And it depends on how they've been reared and trained. 
how aggressive they can be. If they're well trained, then there's little aggression. And they do form a very deep bond with the handler, and eventually they see them as a hunting partner. And uh, their power is awesome. Um, you know, when you see how they hunt down deer and fox and hares, it's incredible. And it's still harnessing the power that a wild eagle has, but just it's captive bred. I have to say that uh, Orla has looked me in the eye a couple of times. It's been quite a nervous experience for me. Especially having seen what a golden eagle can drag back to its nest. But what a beautiful thing you are. And there we are. The challenge was to find the golden eagle. I don't think I could have got closer to the golden eagle than this. Not safely, anyway. <laughs>